In this video, we're talking about severe weather in the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley regions. The Storm Prediction Center has put out an enhanced risk of severe weather today, a slight risk for tomorrow, and even a day four 15% risk further east. Also, the National Hurricane Center has officially designated Tropical Cyclone 6, and it looks like it'll hit the US. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Yesterday, we had a regional outbreak of tornadoes in Northern Illinois. We talked about the possibility of that in yesterday's video, and it actually overperformed much more than I thought it would. Thankfully, there was minimal damage and most of these tornadoes were small and they just went through cornfields. But a lot of storm chasers had a great time yesterday following these storms around and probably getting the best pictures and videos that they'll get for a long time. If you live in Northern Illinois, it's very unlikely that you were affected by the tornadoes yesterday. It's a little bit more likely that you will be affected by the severe weather that we are expecting today. So let's get right into talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. Not much going on right now. We had a little complex of storms bring some severe weather to Kansas, and that's gonna be moving into the Kansas City Metro here within the next little bit. I'm uh, really not expecting much out of that right now, but all of this, even this little area of precipitation that we're seeing over here in Ohio and Indiana, it's all connected, okay? And it's gonna to come together, and a little disturbance is gonna cause some big time severe weather today in Southern Wisconsin and Northern Illinois, once again. Uh, and really the impacts of this severe weather is gonna be felt through a much larger area. If you take a look at the SPC's uh, slight risk it's a pretty large slight risk. So if you're in the yellow there, uh, definitely be weather aware today. But if you're in the orange, pay attention to this video, okay? So uh, that's pretty much what's going on right now. Let's go ahead and start talking about what's gonna happen uh, in the future on the weather models. All right, here we are looking at the NAM three kilometer model. Once again, if you wanna keep up with the date and time, just like always, it's gonna be displayed right up there in Eastern Standard Time, keep that in mind. And once again, we're watching this area down here for the possibility of big time severe weather today, okay? so the the tornado threat's gonna be pretty low today. I don't think we're gonna see a, a, a regional outbreak or a small outbreak or even a large outbreak of tornadoes today. The biggest threat's gonna be those straight line damaging winds. And I'll show you what's gonna happen right here as we pull this forward. Here we are at 5 p.m. today, okay? 5 p.m., 4 p.m. Central. Uh, we are gonna see a bunch of storms popping up from uh, southern Wisconsin near Madison all the way down into the Des Moines area there in Iowa. And it's at this point where we do have, once again, a very small chance of some tornadoes tornadoes happening here, uh, but I think that the real threat's gonna happen as these storms congeal together and form a straight line damaging wind threat, okay? Here we are around 7 p.m. Southern Wisconsin, uh, getting close to the Chicago Metro, uh, into Northern Illinois, Eastern uh, Iowa, anywhere where you see these Boeing uh, sections of these storms, especially when you're watching the radar later today, that's where we're gonna see the biggest chance of seeing some big time damaging winds, okay? We're talking about in excess of hurricane force winds in some places, okay? Okay. You know, when there's an enhanced risk of severe weather, if you get a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, pay extra close attention to it because it might not be your average severe thunderstorm warning that you're used to getting. Uh, you guys in Iowa know all about that. In fact, today is the uh, one year anniversary of the big derecho that went through and caused all that damage and uh, really just uh, wreaked havoc across the state. I don't think that today's storm system will, uh, you know, match that, <laughs> but it's definitely still going to cause damage and it's probably going to cause a lot of problems out here. So make sure you are prepared for it. And let's keep pushing this forward. Uh, these storms are going to get really strong as they get into northeastern Illinois too, south of Ottawa, south of Interstate 80 there. Uh, as you can see, we kind of have three broken line segments now. Pretty much this is going to become a uh, now casting event. And if you live up here, make sure you have a good radar app and just track these. Okay. If you see these Boeing segments coming towards you, get ready for the high winds. Uh, and we're at 10 PM now. And something interesting happens around midnight. We get a, a really robust uh, mesoscale convective system. That's kind of like some sort of outflow boundary that just really blows up here as it moves into northern Missouri and western portions of Illinois and you know surprisingly that this is not associated with our enhanced risk but according to this model run it looks the most intense and most robust out of everything that we've seen so once again if you live in northern Missouri here uh, you are not out of the woods you could definitely see some of those strong winds all the way down into the St. Louis metro maybe uh, as we go late into the night into the early morning hours tomorrow here we are at 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. and of course everything starts to die out the further we go early early into the morning tomorrow. Now, we do have a slight risk of severe weather tomorrow too, okay? And this one's pretty interesting. The Storm Prediction Center here has a pretty large slight risk, uh, but according to the NAM model, we're really not gonna be seeing much at all. Here we are around 10 a.m. We're gonna see a you know a pretty weak line of storms moving through the 
the Minneapolis region into the Rice Lake and Eau Claire region of Wisconsin. And then really that breaks up. We might see a little bit of reformation here during the heating of the day near Milwaukee. I don't see much of a severe weather threat there at all. But as you can see, uh, we are going to have this cold front coming through. And anybody that's in this area where that cold air meets the warm air that tries to bubble up here through the Ohio Valley has the chance of seeing an isolated severe thunderstorm or two. The slight risk for tomorrow should be taken serious, just as all slight risks should. Uh, but I don't think it's as serious as the one we're seeing today and definitely not as serious as the enhanced risk. So uh, we're going to keep an eye on that and that could change tomorrow. I'll, I'll probably make another video tomorrow and I'll keep you updated. But as of right now, don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. And then as we go even further into the future, here we are on Thursday, uh, we're going to have some strong storms moving through the Chicago region once again, and maybe reforming there as they get into Detroit. Uh, but it looks like Thursday is mostly going to be a break for everybody before we get into Friday, where we do have a 15% chance of severe weather in the Ohio Valley. Once again, that's a day four 15% chance, and that's pretty rare for this area this time of year. All right, here's a look at the year Euro model and we have to switch to this uh, to really look at the day four threat because the NAM three kilometer model doesn't go out that far and also it's going to give you guys a chance to look at the rest of the United States as I understand that everybody that watches this channel doesn't live up here uh, but you guys got to remember I have to talk about the most interesting thing I can't give a detailed forecast for every person every place in the US especially if there's nothing really going on there anyways here we are at Friday at 2 a.m. Uh, what's gonna happen on Friday is we're gonna see a little bit of a boundary you can see the sagging nature of this 570 lineup here that's indicating maybe some uh, slightly cooler air moving down from Canada and it's going to really uh, meet with some of our much warmer air here in the southeastern portion of the United States and it's looking like there might be a very large line of severe thunderstorms popping up from I don't know Illinois uh, Indiana Ohio all the way into to Pennsylvania, maybe western portions of New York, and then that's going to drop to the south uh, during the overnight periods. Okay, so uh, it's really too early to tell the details about this particular severe weather setup. Not sure if this would have much of a tornado threat right now. Uh, we will work out the details on that as we go forward, but just know uh, as we get f into Friday later this week, if you live in Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, anywhere in that yellow shaded area for the 15% risk, uh, it looks like probably one of our better chances of severe weather this year is going to be moving in as I think this is the first time a 15% risk has been issued for this area this year this far out anyways so and then after that our focus immediately shifts to this bad boy down here look at that we've got tropical cyclone six it is forecasted right now to become possibly a tropical depression or a tropical storm if that happens it will be named Fred and it looks like old Fred is going to make it into the Gulf of Mexico like we talked about yesterday and intensify right before it makes landfall somewhere in Florida now this will change over the next couple of days but right Right now, it does look like Western Florida needs to be on uh, the lookout for a possible tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane. It depends on how long uh, this storm is allowed to stay over the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, the longer that this kind of hovers over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the longer it will intensify. So we got to remember, too, this is a trend, right? Just the other day, we were looking at this storm going this way. Now we're looking at it going this way. If we end up seeing this thing uh, taking a track like this, uh, similar to what Hurricane Laura did last year, uh, we we're going to see a similar situation probably because this area of the Gulf of Mexico is just steaming son and there's really not going to be anything there to impede a hurricane's growth so if we can get this thing to go right through open waters there in the Gulf of Mexico I would not be surprised to see this uh, intensify uh, dramatically before it made landfall somewhere in uh, Texas Louisiana Mississippi or Alabama or maybe the western panhandle of Florida but as of right now that's an unlikely scenario what we're really watching is for a weak tropical system to move over the islands of Cuba and Haiti and all these places and, and you know continue to weaken and then it's really going to try to intensify as it moves up the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico but it's not going to have too long before it makes landfall there and then it looks like once again here near Panama City uh, somewhere around there is where it's looking like it's going to make landfall. That's not where it will, but as of right now, that's what it looks like. And then that's going to bring up a lot of moisture into the southeastern portion of the United States, and we're going to be dealing with a lot of rainfall and some uh, off and on showers and storms as we go all the way through Thursday, August 19th. All right, let's take a look at the official update from the National Hurricane Center here on uh, Tropical Cyclone 6. As you can see, uh, you know, even though we have a fully developed tropical cyclone now, this is uh, the least busy we've seen 
seen the NHC website in a while. Uh, we were looking at possibly four tropical systems forming up, but now it looks like we've only got the one. Uh, but this is definitely the most significant one, and we will have to watch it closely. This is the official track from the Hurricane Center. As you can see, it's very quickly going to turn into a tropical storm right before it gets to Puerto Rico, and then likely it will uh, weaken into a depression as it goes over the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And then as you can see, the longer it stays over the land, the weaker it becomes, and then it gets over open waters a little bit here north of Cuba, and it might become a tropical storm. It's a tropical storm, which is a tropical storm, and it will likely be uh, a tropical storm or a hurricane uh, once it gets up here towards the panhandle of Florida, okay? And once again, remember, if we see this take a little bit further of a south track, uh, that could be a, a pretty bad situation for the uh, Gulf Coast there uh, from Louisiana to, uh, you know, once again, Florida. I definitely don't want to hype that situation up and, and get everybody scared and upset about, you know, what could happen. But if you live out here, just be smart. Of course, it might not happen, but let's just act like it's going to. Go ahead and get prepared. You don't want to get caught in a situation where uh, we get surprised that this thing uh, actually ends up going this way after it gets to Cuba. Uh, and now you've only got three or four days to prepare for maybe a Category 2 or higher hurricanes. So yeah, everybody in the Gulf here, uh, be prepared for uh, the tropical storm season and hurricane season because even if this one doesn't do it, one of them's going to, okay? We're going to have more storms as we go into August and September. And uh, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be here for all of them. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you slap that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn notifications on. I'm going to have live updates tonight on Twitter and Facebook covering the severe weather in the Great Lakes region and in Northern Illinois especially. So if you're interested in that, please follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, that's also where I'm the most active anywhere on the internet. So if you want to ask me a question or anything, that's the place to do it. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.